Good morning, friends. It's Sandra Clay. I'm the pastor at Cooks United Methodist Church, and I uh, welcome you uh, into a time where we can focus on um, our own hearts and the one who created it. Um, and especially, I welcome you on this Ash Wednesday uh, of 2021. Uh, I am excited about um, the prospect of this season. <clears throat> it's a little um, difficult, I, I think, for those of us who um, are courageous enough to try to find all of the meaning that we can uh, in these 40 days of journeying with Jesus toward uh, the cross. And so um, I want to tell you very quickly about two very prominent experiences with dust uh, in my life. Uh, and I want you to be thinking about uh, the reality of dust in yours too. Now, this, my guess is we share. And uh, for those of you who have purchased one of those uh, sassy uh, thought for the days uh, that will last you this uh, whole year. It was inspired by the pandemic uh, that we are still kind of in the middle of. And so I don't want to ruin the day that you pull this thought, but it's one of my favorites. So forgive me. Um, and the, the thought goes like this. I don't know who said it first, but I am feeling her. I dusted once. It came back. I'm not falling for that again. I, that's one reality of dust in our lives, is it not? It never goes away. Uh, and in homes like ours, it's uh, that dust that we forget is a sign of death in some sorts, gets mixed with dog hair, and it is tenacious beyond belief. Uh, the other experience I've had is I can't tell you how many times I have held um, the urn uh, or the box that is passed on from a funeral, dir a funeral director uh, in order for me to place on the altar uh, as we prepare to celebrate the life of one who has become a part of the church triumphant or one who has passed from this life to the next. I've even um, been a part of uh, services where we scatter those ashes and to have that dust cling to you to your fingertips to the clothes that you're wearing all of a sudden is to do exactly what Ash Wednesday I believe is meant for us throughout the years of um, church tradition it's meant for us to experience, and that is our own uh, sense of um, limitedness, um, finitude. And Duffield uh, really pushes us in that direction. Let me share with you again a resource. Um, if you don't have one to help you get through Lent, Jill Duffield has written this book. I know it's backwards probably for y'all, but um, Lent in plain sight uses ordinary objects and trying to um, see ordinary objects differently, I think leads to uh, a powerful experience in uh, life. And I think it also leads us to understand closer to our true worth uh, as God's own creatures too. Um, and so learning how to um, navigate dust in our lives uh, becomes the very central part of what Ash Wednesday is as we lead into the 40 days and so there are a couple of verses uh, that I have printed uh, there <clears throat> that I want to kind of serve as bookends for a few thoughts uh, here this morning the first is from the second chapter of Genesis that's the second uh, telling of creation it's also the one that's more narrative and so there's no surprise that we get the story of how we came to be and how God was in, um, engaging with the dust of the ground. Listen to Genesis, the second chapter, verse 7. Then the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. 
<clears throat> the dust is the organic holy stuff of which you and I are made. You, you've heard those words before. We're made of dust. We return to dust. Perhaps you've heard it ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Uh, and then there is um, uh, a way to spiritually engage with kind of the dust in our homes too. No matter how hard we try, there are still remnants of uh, death around us. Listen to this verse from Psalm 119. It's the 25th uh, verse. I am completely discouraged. I lie in the dust. Revi revive me, O oh God, by your word. Sometimes the dust is not just the organic, uh, gloriously limited stuff of which we are made. Sometimes the dust is the reminder of death all around us, especially what we have contributed to or created uh, on our own. And so dust on this day in particular represents a myriad of uh, realities, of our own experiences, of deep meaning. Some we control, some we have no control over. Which makes me uh, think then of the tradition that the church uh, has uh, offered. Ash Wednesday uh, is uh, in a very short order a time of penitence. We, we recognize uh, how we have fallen short of God's dream for us and how uh, we are the ones who hold responsibility uh, for that. And so from uh, we take on the sign of the cross, but the, but the practice of ashes it goes way further back than that. You may remember from the time of Jonah being uh, sent by God to the Ninevites. They heard the gospel news, the good news from Jonah, whether he was excited about telling it or not. And they repented of their sin and they put themselves, they dressed themselves with sackcloth, something like burlap. And that discomfort of wearing those kind of clothes, especially in a wilderness type desert area, who don't you know that was a miserable experience? But it was a chosen experience to remind the Ninevites of not only um, their uh, penitence, but also the pain that comes in living apart from God. And so that's the tradition of burlap or, or sackcloth, but of ashes. It would also be a reminder of um, the dirtiness that is left, the mark left on us when we choose that life apart from God's will and God's desire. Most of you, if you've never thought about it before, are going to experience that tonight. Yeah, how easy is it to get that cross off? We've got all kinds of soap and things like that now, but there will always be an extra hard scrub you have to put in, or there's a redness that's left behind just from trying to get that, uh, the evidence of that cross uh, removed. And so the issues of discomfort and recognizing that I bring that on myself when I uh, push against God, when I wanna do things uh, in my own way, begins to um, draw a connection, I believe, between the dust of ordinary days to the dust that we will choose this evening or some other time today if you're able to get out. Um, Duffield beautifully leaves uh, every day during this 40-day journey except for Sundays. Um, she beautifully leaves questions to get you to think about um, the notion of how we celebrate, what, what does it mean for us to be made out of dust, um, what does it mean for us to feel like we are lying in the dust, and at point blank, have you ever felt like that? Well, there are two questions that I want to raise for us, and I'm, I'm going to share with you. I, I know that it's 
hard for me to ask that you would share in the comment section because these can be very personal experiences but in order for us to be truly receptive to what uh, God has for us during this season I think we have to be bold enough to ask these questions because beyond the penitence to the to wearing our knowledge or our confession or our need of God um, in God's fullness on us somehow I want this to be happening I hope this will be happening in your spirit why do we need to be reminded of our finitude of our uh, dustiness why do we have to be reminded that we are not all that and a bag of chips why do we need that it's because we forget we, God has given, I think it's because God has given us a power and authority. God has invested in us a sense of agency and is usually um, uh, us capable people. When we come up against something that we cannot fix or handle on our own without the power of God, we are reminded of our finitude. That's not for God to put us in our place. Well, unless you need it. But I, instead, I, I see that a reminder of our finitude, our uh, dustiness, also shows us another way to look at the magnitude of God. And God is offering God's full self to us. I, I tell you this question, why do we need to be reminded of our finitude? There's a little... Um, rebel child inside me that w wants to ask but what about the the base question and the base question is why did God for me it is why did God make us the way that we are why were we made with what feels like incompletions what why were we made with limits why were we made is that out of my own push and desire to be like God I mean like to boss like God or is there something else afoot I, I don't know about that but one other offering that I would share with you today is a part of that second question that I referenced how does God work within and through our limits who so how for us to be able to answer this question, we have to recognize that, that God is aware of our limits. God was very aware even in creating us of the limits that we will experience and the limits that we own personally. God's very aware. It wasn't a setup. I don't believe it was a setup uh, to make us um, uh, a little lower than the angels. I, I don't think... Uh, it was to frustrate us or to thwart us at all. How, how about trying this on for size? I believe God intended that we would be in relationship. Some of you were with us uh, earlier in the summer when we talked about being created in community. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit present uh, at the beginning of all that we know as life. Uh, and we were created for community. Um, by that community of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, and so we feel broken, we feel incomplete, not just when we are outside of a relationship with God, but also when there is brokenness in our relationships with other people. And so how does God work within those limitations? How does God work through our limits? I truly believe this, my friends. When we decide we will be open to uh, God's working, when we come to terms with our limits, when we come to terms with our finitude, it becomes an act of trust to open ourselves up, our minds, our hearts, our hands and feet, and all that they're busy doing. When we open ourselves up to God's working, that openness becomes the same kind of gift to God that God offers to you when wisdom is poured in, when discernment is poured in, when an experience of knowing the very grace uh, that God offers, uh, when you realize that your life is hidden in Him. I'm telling you, praise hands all around, Sharonda, because that's, um, 
that's something that only you can offer. It becomes a holy offering in, in union with Christ's offering for us when we open ourselves up knowing that we have limits but God does not. When we open ourselves up to that relationship to receive from God, we are actually giving back a part of ourselves that no one else can give. And so on this holy day, where we are courageous enough to take on the sign of our limits, our finitude, our sinfulness, our mistakes, our rebelliousness, and the list goes on. When we begin to take that on, it comes in the sign of a cross. The sign of the cross is victorious because Christ does not hang there any longer. We make the sign of the cross uh, remembering that victory is ours, not of our own accord, but when we offer ourselves in relationship with this one for whom nothing is impossible, the one who is the source of grace and hope and life. Again, I hope that you will find a way to engage in a meaningful observation of Lent. Maybe you'll be fasting We'll talk more about that as we move into the season. Uh, you don't get extra trophies, by the way, if you make it through 40 days um, absent of Doritos or Coke or mm, whatever it is that you think you're giving up. Fasting is about setting aside the things of the world so that there's more room for God. It's another variation of this opening ourselves up so that we offer ourselves to God in the same way God is offering his grace, God's mercy, and God's love to us. However it is that you choose to celebrate, we are praying for you this day that you would know this. Whoever and whenever uh, you hear my voice, that you are loved, that God is for you, and that God longs to work in and through your finitude, your limits your dustiness. I want to share with you a beautiful prayer that Duffield includes uh, in her week on dust. Would you pray? Lord God, giver of our every breath, as we begin a Lenten journey, send your Holy Spirit to blow the dust off whatever in or around us needs new life. Remind us of our limits so that we will once again experience your limitless power. May the ashes on our foreheads or on our hands prompt us to live our lives in the shape of the cross so that even when the ashes have been washed away, others will see in us the face of Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. Uh, it's a little different, this study that we're going to engage in, but my hope is that you will not be afraid to think about the dust in your life, the dust of your life, and know that God is already present with you. Uh, happy Ash Wednesday. I will see you soon. Bye.